Part 6 of Sony Vegas Video Editing for Beginners. This is the final part of this uh, module. Uh, my name's Craig, and let's press on. This has to do with rendering. You've heard me use that word before. And what is it? Well, rendering basically takes all, this, all the components that we've put together here, and it combines them into one single file that we can either upload to YouTube or burn on DVD or play on our iPod or computer or whatever. And uh, when you render your video to a file like that, it takes all of these elements that you've thrown on here and it kind of muxes them together. And that's actually the real term. It combines them. It renders them into one single file. So that when you play that file back, everything's going to look nice and smooth and uniform and no choppiness, um, providing you've done it properly. And... Um, it's ready to go to whatever you want to do with it. And what you want to do with it basically uh, tells you uh, what kind of file you want to create. Are you going to DVD? Then you need to use MPEG-2. That's just the file format that DVD uses. Are you going to YouTube? Well, I have a simple formula for that, uh, which I'll show you. Are you going to your iPod? Well, then you need to, find, you need to, to follow the instructions about how to make a file that will play on your iPod. And there's a lot of information here that I have not got time to cover because rendering is a very simple on one hand, but it can get complex, especially when you're doing a DVD because there's file size restraints with DVD. You can only put 4.7 gigabytes on a disc. So if your, fi if your file is huge um, or it's longer than two hours or whatever, then you need to somehow tone down your bit rate tweak it down so that it will fit on the DVD. So there's some concerns there. But I'm going to start off by just saying that we've got this little project that we did. It's only, you know, 40 seconds long. Just long enough for us to demonstrate what we're talking about here. So I'm going to, I'm going to send this up to YouTube. Let's say we're going to put this on YouTube. Here's how to do it. Click on File, Render As. All right. Okay, let me move this. Go to Save as Type. Click on the down arrow. And go up to MPEG-4. This is main concept, MPEG-4. Click on that. Now I've got a template here that I've created. But I'll show you what's in it. So in order to customize your MPEG-4 video, you go to Custom. Here... Uh, you want to make sure that this is set to best. All right. You come down here to video, click on the video tab, and you want to have a size of 640 by 480 if you're doing a standard uh, 4x3 uh, video, just a standard uh, size video. And if you're doing a widescreen video, you want 640 by 360. And that's what I've got here because my video is actually no mine is a, is a standard um, it's not a widescreen all right that'll get you your high quality link below the video where it says click on high quality you'll get that and you'll also get stereo nowadays too okay you can practically accept the defaults here for everything on the screen that you see you can pretty much just say go all right this down here is your bitrate setting um, because there's a, 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 a one gigabyte limit for YouTube, you got a lot of room here. You can make a huge file if you want. So you can set it as large as you want, pretty much. I mean, up to a limit. Like I said, it's one gigabyte. It all depends on what you can stand to upload to YouTube. You know, how fast is your connection? How high a quality do you want your video? I'm going to accept the defaults here. And basically what this is telling me is the average bit rate is 1 million bits per second or 1 megabit. And the maximum bit rate is 4 megabits. What does that mean? The most information is needed when there's more motion in the video. So if you just have a static screen like what I have here, not a lot of information is required in the file, in the output file, because nothing's changing. It's the same thing, frame by frame by frame. 
Uh, but if I move my screen around and do something here that's going to cause a lot of movement, then the bit rate needs to be higher to accommodate for the more the need for more information because there's more changes from frame to frame. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's a variable bit rate. And what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, if there's not a lot of motion, we're going to use uh, one megabit. But if things start getting crazy and things start moving around a lot, we're going to jump up to four. Okay, and anywhere in between, depending on the amount of motion. Okay, just in a nutshell, you can probably leave these where they are. Or if they're not the way these are, if they're not one megabit and four megabit, change them to those settings and you'll get a good quality uh, video. As far as audio goes, you can leave it where it is. Mine is set to 44.1 uh, kilohertz sampling rate and 128 kilobits per second uh, or bits per second. It's kilobits per second. In this point, in this, in this case, for it's like an MP3. You want 128, you want 6, 160, you want 192. Um, if you've never experienced those numbers, then just choose 128 for this uh, field here and 44.1 for here. Okay, make sure include audio is checked. And that's all you need to do. YouTube loves this setting. All right. Make sure your render loop region only is not checked because you want to render your entire video, not just a selection that you may have made to a portion of your video. Give it a name, camping. Save it to whatever folder you want. Mine's just going to go on the desktop here and click save. Now this rendering process can take a long time. It can take minutes, hours, depending on how long your video is and how fast your computer is. This is only a 40 second video, so it's not going to take very long. Well, there we have one file created camping.mpeg4.mp4. Double click it and it plays. All right, so that's one single file. Now we can upload that to YouTube. It's um, this particular file is only short, so it's uh, five megabytes or five and a half megabytes. Not a big thing for uploading to YouTube, shouldn't take too long. Uh, if it's a bigger file, it's obviously going to take longer. Now, what if you want to do a DVD? Um, this is a you know a little more involved. Basically, in a nutshell, you go to render file, render as, and you choose MPEG2 because that's what format the DVD uh, spec uses. So MPEG2, and for the template DVD and TSC. Now, if you're in Europe, you need to go to DVD PAL. If you're in North America, like Canada, and the United States, you use NTSC. Okay. And just accept the defaults for now. Now, if your video is longer than an hour and a half, you're going to have to do some changes. And I, I haven't got time at this point to explain about that, but I will in a future episode teach you about rendering and bit rates and uh, how to adjust them, how to calculate how much space you need for your uh, video if it's long, if it's two hours long. Okay. And, but if you just accept the defaults here, you're going to get a really good quality DVD uh, compatible video, which you can then import into whatever DVD authoring program you use. So I'm going to say save. And again, it's going to render. Okay, so there that's done. Now there's a lot of other formats you might be interested in rendering too, like for your iPod, your PSP. There just isn't enough time. Rendering it can be a real uh, black art. So now we have camping.mpg, which is our MPEG file we just created. And there it is again. All right. So that's the basics of rendering. Um, just those two popular formats. And again, it's a little bit of a learning curve as far as what format you need to use for what purpose. But uh, uh, this is something I spent many, many hours, days, years studying, working on. And it's going to take a little bit of digging on your part to figure out the best way to render your video for the purpose that you're going to be using it for. Uh, this is the end of this particular module. I'll be doing a little more on rendering uh, in the next module. 
Um, but we'll also be doing some more exciting things like color correction, special effects, some stuff that you might find really interesting and cool. All right, so thanks a lot for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you, and stay tuned for the next module. Take care.